Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the official Poker Stars channel. We are live once again. My name is Nicholas Walsh. I will be your host for today, and we are playing Spinning Goes all day today. It's Tuesday. It's the Central Channel. It's me. You guys know what I do now at this point. I play Spinning Goes. That's kind of my. It's kind of my jam. All right, little five X. Dean, are you somebody who feels like, you know, you can easily just relax in those situations? You know, you feel like you can really just, like, let loose? I I, I feel like when I'm traveling, like, when I'm away from uh, from work, I just, I'm always thinking about work. And not just poker, obviously. Like, my, my work now is obviously more than just more than just poker. I, I'm, I'm quite, quite happy not thinking about poker, actually, to be honest. It never leaves you, but I don't obsess about it, you know? Chig says, I've been playing poker for years and would like to go full-time, but not sure what I declare for income in the UK. Uh, if you're making money from poker, there's no tax, Chigs, in the United Kingdom. Now, obviously, this is not financial advice. If you'd like to speak with a an accountant directly, they will probably confirm the same thing. But um, as far as I'm aware, in the United Kingdom, you do not pay any, any, um, any tax on your income from poker, even if you are considering yourself a professional. Uh, as far as I understand it, the UK government does not consider any professional to be a professional. If that makes sense. GGZ says, I love this spinning go streams. I'm glad you're enjoying it, man. Welcome. Pleasure to have you here. We're obviously calling a river bed here. No problem at all. Oh, we got him. Don't worry. If you are an ambassador and you have an income which is outside of what you make from poker, then obviously that's a regular taxable income because you're being paid for a service, right? Hold! Let's go. All right, cool. That's a nice one. Little 5X. We got our multi-ISO size strategy that we developed for um, for the preflop stuff I have on the website. Preflop charts to the rescue. I have to say as well, guys, since I've been implementing some of the strategies from the chart pack that I created, it's... My win rate is absolutely unequivocally improved. And I think our results have actually shown that as well. I think our overall chip EV might have improved by, by, by a good few points. I just never, you just never ever believe this in 100 years. Like, honestly, I, this is just repping absolutely nothing. Like, seriously, GL with that, mate. Yeah, we're still calling. Again, this is probably more likely to be a queen or a king or a diamond than anything else. So the float is absolutely mandatory. And if he doesn't bet this river, we commit all of it 100%. In fact, if he does that, we're definitely shoving because he never does this with a king. He probably never has an ace here. It's very unlikely for him to have an ace. He never has the hearts, so it's definitely a commit. Probably just has a queen or some bullshit, right? Oh, that's what I thought. Thank you very much. The 8-6 off. Two street float. River Jam Bluff, get out of my house, sir. Get out of my house. Uh, we're still trapping with sixes here, guys. He can shove a lot worse here in these situations. And of course, also, it plays okay post-flop. Sixes, sevens, eights becomes much more playable than the small pocket pairs that we would consider shoving here. Yeah, XTU, I haven't heard about that specifically, but also I think people overestimate like, I think people grossly overestimate how much how much actual additional um, benefit that gives you, right? Because how many how many times have you seen me playing? Okay, I think we still have to go broke here, guys. He could just turn up here with a seven, and you know that'll be all of our cool bluffs will be for nothing. But he will check raise here with diamonds. He will also check raise here with a three or a deuce. So we kind of have to commit and hope for the best when we've when we've uh, when we've underrepresented our hand in the situation. Yeah, exactly. It's really important that if we see bet this board, we are aware that our opponents will panic with smaller pairs, diamonds, complete bluffs. Sometimes they'll have a seven there, of course, and all that good stuff. But in that situation, we need to be brave and understand, you know, what kind of a range he's going to do that with. So very well played there from us. Pretty much, pretty much a perfect game. That was actually very, very good. We're gonna rep the eight here. We're gonna rep the eight, guys. Wish me luck. He might just snap us off with an overpair or whatever, but I feel like we can believably represent an eight in this situation.
Level 24 says, these streams are plus EV for me. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for your kind words. It really means a lot to me. I really try and make stuff that you guys is going to be good for you guys and useful for you guys. So that's uh, it's very important. And now, I don't want to say that was an amazing play. Need to look at the push folds. Uh, against a reg again, queen six is a slam dunk push. Completely profitable and also unexploitable poker there. Jack 10, 100% push here for sure against reg. This is kind of one of the reasons why I don't want to play higher stakes generally on stream, guys. Like, I, uh, Part of the reason why I play lower stakes in general on stream is because most people are playing these stakes, so it's more relevant for the players that you're going to play if you see this content. But on top of that as well, like if I were to play two regs in every game uh, that we play, it's just going to be a lot of this like late game standard push fold stuff, right? There's like very little nuance to, to well, there's still a lot of nuance, but the nuance is often lost on most players. Things check fine here. The limp of that stack depth is a little bit suspicious, but queen nine is definitely good enough to play from out of position, no problem. Super delayed one big blind bet. Because we're on stream and we're talking about how we get max value from an ace in this situation. <laughs> This guy's probably playing like four tables and we're just here talking about like all this bullshit. <laughs> all right, we got him in the box, guys. We got him in the box. Send him home. Send him home. Let's go. 50 bucks in the bag. Let's get it. King 7 0 clubs. Did we ever check raise this texture? That's an interesting question. Probably not. Maybe actually. Hmm. We could just we could mix one in here. I think this is kind of interesting. Something about this flop is telling me to check raise. Every once in a while we'll throw one of those in there. Just mix it up. I think very frequently we don't know. We just flat. Uh interesting texture here. I think we check flop with Jack High. Backdoor diamonds, backdoor straight draws feels good. Ooh, sometimes we turn top pair. If he has a 10, a deuce, or a four, he should probably always call the full pot turn. Clubs sometimes as well. Nice, got even now. Yeah. Yeah, there are leaderboards sometimes, but it also depends on your location, so look it up first, Nasty, because... um. Um, make sure you look it up first because there are certain regions where the government restrictions will not allow stars to run um, those for you I think we check we still have to call pretty much any bet on the river because they will still have be bluffing miss spades they'll be bluffing miss spades sometimes um, sometimes they just have like ace high king high floats that they turn into bluffs this is such a weird one you guys I think we still have to call. Sometimes he'll just have a deuce. Sometimes he'll have an eight. I think in a lot of his eights bet the flop though. I think five, six bets the flop quite often too. We're blocking that as well, I guess, but yeah, nice, nice, uh, nice call there. Just feels like way too strong to fold in that situation. Very, very clean, guys. Obviously, that call is just so good because he overbet jams in that situation. I don't hate the line. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm. I, I, maybe I do. Maybe I don't like that actually. Like I think if you have, I'm not sure. If he does that as a bluff and he does that with the deuce, then obviously it's balanced. But he's not gonna not gonna have a deuce an overwhelming amount of the time. But yeah, very good game from us there. I really, really like that one. Oh my god. Look at the flop. Is this guy just giving up every time now? I think we probably want to go small, really small. I think this is better than, than our, our normal balance size. We still want him to float if he has over cards. 
Very cool. So we call and then we check the river, right? Because we just got so much of this board. He's just going to have bluffs or he's going to have big hands that we're going to stack. Yeah, that's a good river to bluff. Good river. Continue. 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 Is this where he just has sixes? That would be so funny. All right, gang. Sixes or kings would be hilarious, but obviously we're going for we're going for the, all the value. Can certainly still have some straights. Can certainly still have aces and stuff like that. Oh, it's just an absolutely beautiful check on the river. Yes, mate. What a flop. Nasty Flame, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. I approve. I approve of this flop. So this will be 19. Yeah, this is an easy bet on the turn. I think smaller is better, actually. 4.7 is my size. And on the river, we get the whole stack with the nuts. Just give him jack 10 one time. I, he never has two pair. If he has two pair, he check raises. But he might still call us with like queen six or something, right? Technically speaking, if he shoves here, we're supposed to call. I think given the fact that this is a 2x multiplier, we're going to make the call here. He will still shove hands like 8-7 suited here. He'll still, still shove like 9-10. He'll shove 6-5 suited, that kind of a thing as well. Two live cards against that combo is fine. GG. All right, we have a game. It's just the 2x multiplier, but we're going to try and get lucky here, gang. Guys, uh, both of these guys are, are pretty much confirmed regs, I think, at this point. So this is not a good setup for us here, I'm afraid. Instant gratification here. Uh, I think we are actually supposed to flat um, against... I believe this is still a flat, in fact. Yeah, I think this is. I think we three bet queens and kings and we flat aces still. I know we are quite deep, but... Still a possibility to do some weird stuff now. Uh, me and Alexander uh, DSL actually have some really funny history as well. It's, it's quite uh, quite cool. This guy will blast off if we give him the opportunity. This is how we would bluff. So we'll keep it nice and balanced. And then we commit the rest. If he has a nine, good luck to him. It's all good. But uh, I know this guy doesn't give me a ton of credit. And actually, that's another reason why playing aces like this is so interesting. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nice. Uh, if, if you guys haven't seen the clip, there's a, there's a really, really good one of him calling me down super light once when we were playing 100, I think. Uh, we're going broke, guys. We're going broke. We are about to broke this hand. Top pair literally never folding in 100 million years. All right, wish me luck. I don't feel good about this one. He will have over pairs and shit sometimes, but what are we going to do? Can't defend it and then not shove it. Oh, out kicked. Love to see the 10 hold there, baby. Feels fantastic. Getting the chips in good. Yep, easy call if he shoves. Got to give him the got to give him the BM here first. Wish him luck. 200 US dollars in the bank, another very clean game from us as well. Thank you very much for uh for hanging around. Make sure you check out the website and all that good stuff and I will see you guys back here tomorrow for more spinning go action from 2 p.m. onwards as usual. Uh